Section 5. The Mu Civilization The end of the Lemurian civilization came quite abruptly, 27,000 years ago, on a blistering hot summer afternoon, when people were euphorically enjoying one of their favorite pastimes, listening to exquisite Lemurian music. It was common practice among Lemurians to enjoy music for two hours every afternoon, and it was during this time that catastrophe struck. Chandeliers began to sway violently, and glass windows shattered. In a matter of minutes, Lemuria's magnificent modern concert halls were collapsing as the eastern portion of the continent began to sink into the ocean. By 4 o'clock in the afternoon, half of the continent had already disappeared. By 7 o'clock the following morning, only a vast expanse of shimmering blue ocean welcomed the rising sun. Not a trace of the continent could be found except the remains of the Lemurians above the ocean. The destruction of Lemuria was swift and complete. Its entire population of 2.5 million vanished into the sea. In catastrophic disasters, people are affected without regard to whether they are wicked or virtuous. However, the civilization itself survived, for the Lemurians had established a colony on a continent named Moa, which later came to be known as Mu. The continent of Mu, which was located in the Pacific Ocean, had emerged some 370,000 years ago, and had existed longer than Lemuria. Mu's shape changed through time, and at the end of the Lemurian civilization, it was approximately twice the area of present-day Australia, and was situated where Indonesia is found today. Although people had lived on this continent for hundreds of thousands of years, they did not yet have an advanced form of civilization. Most of the northern inhabitants were fishers, those in the south were hunters, and those in the midwest were farmers. The more advanced people of Lemuria eventually invaded the Mu people. Around 28,000 years ago, the Lemurians sent a large fleet to the Mu continent and began to colonize it by force. They captured Mu people and took them back to Lemuria as slaves. While Lemurians spent their days enjoying the arts and studying, their Mu slaves toiled away at the day-to-day -day tasks of life. This caused massive clouds of dark thought energy to form over the Lemurian civilization, which eventually resulted in the complete destruction of the continent. However, since some of the advanced culture of Lemuria had taken root in the colony of Mu, after Lemuria vanished, a new advanced civilization slowly but surely began to appear in the land of Mu. About 20,000 years ago, Escalant, who later reincarnated as the ninth dimension spirit Zoroaster, descended to the land of Mu. The name Escalant means excellent, and is the original source of that word. He put great emphasis on scientific applications of the power of sunlight, which he believed was important in two ways. He regarded light as both a holy emanation of God's glory, and as a form of energy that could be harnessed to provide useful power. Escalant taught people to put their hands together in a sign of respect and to bow on one knee whenever they saw a source of light, whether it was the sun, the moon, or an indoor lamp. This became the basis of later Asian traditions, including the custom of bowing. How did Escalant make light useful? Fortunately, he was receiving guidance from Kutumi in heaven, whose later incarnations as Archimedes and Isaac Newton are well known today. He was also receiving help from Enlil, who possessed a scientific mind. Guided by these spirits, Escalant focused on amplifying the power of light. This was the first time humankind had begun to establish an age of science. Escalant inspired scientists and engineers to create gigantic solar energy amplifiers, which his people used to light their rooms, drive their ships, and run factories. At the center of every Mu city was a silver pyramid whose sides measured 30 meters, 100 feet. These pyramids absorbed sunlight and amplified its energy before transmitting it to smaller pyramids measuring 10 meters, 30 feet on each side. Located in the city's smaller districts, these pyramids in turn transferred the solar energy to even smaller pyramids with sides measuring 1 meter, 3 feet, which were mounted on the rooftops of every house. This system of advanced solar technology became known as pyramid power and was passed down to the next civilization, Atlantis.